Whose tales are we talking about? <laughs> I want to be careful what context you say that in. <laughs> uh, we're not talking about cotton tails. Or pony tails. We're talking about duck tails. Woohoo! I am Lux. And I am Ember. And this is our thoughts on Disney's new iteration of DuckTales, Season 1, Episodes 10 and 11, The Spear of Selene, and Beware of the Betty System. Oh my god, Darkwing Duck! I know that was not Episode 11, but oh my god! Yes, yes, I didn't even really watch the series, but as soon as we saw those villains on screen, I was like, wrong series, those are Darkwing Duck. Oh my god, it's Darkwing Duck on DuckTales. Oh my god! Yeah, I knew instantly that it was Darkwing Duck, but what I didn't expect, all of the voice actors for this scene were their originals. Both villains and Darkwing. I know there were three villains, but only two of them spoke. Oh my god! They s all the lines! He, his classic tag of the overly long intro, and he actually goes, I should shorten that. <laughs> and the, let's get dangerous. Repeatedly, thanks to a bobblehead. And I love the fact that Launchpad was a fan of his. It makes so much sense. Also, for those who think that this cancels out the fact that they wouldn't actually do a reboot, no, it doesn't. They would just make it the TV series. This also leads us to the fact that later in the series, since Launchpad mentions the actor, we'll probably see a team up with Launchpad on the actor. And let's not forget that Launchpad was actually on Darkwing Duck. Anyone want to bet in this version that he won a place as a cameo actor? Hmm, we'll see, we'll see. But let's go back to the first episode we saw, The Spear of Selene. Where we don't get questions answered. Kind of. Slightly. We see Della actually in action thanks to the memory sphere. And we know that Selene doesn't actually have a spear, S-P-E-A-R. It makes you wonder... What she took, because she actually took it from the McDuck Manor or the vault or something. That's what I always got with the note being left there, because it was left where the object to me was. And it said, I took the Spear of Selene. But in this episode, Selene herself tells us that she does not have a spear. Never did. So why is it called that? Was it a mislabeled artifact? Or was that some sort of secret message? Or maybe the goddess herself didn't have a sphere, but it may not be a secret artifact in the same way we're thinking of everything else. Maybe it's an object that someone else made and called the sphere of Selene. So it might have nothing to do with Selene the goddess. Mm -hmm. Because I thought maybe it was just going to be a play on words, spear and sphere. But in the note, we can see the spelling of the word. Also, when Celine gives the memory sphere to Dewey, she says, even your mother never found this one, which means that Della would have never seen that object. And it just gets deeper. Like I said, they answered a little bit of questions, but they did it in such a way that you're like, oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. You semi-answered one question. You gave me 50 more. Dang you. Dang you and your Gravity Falls writing. Because that's a great way to keep people interested in a show, but you can't do it for too long. You have to answer at least the first set of questions you gave them. You can give more after that, but you can't just keep going and going with the same questions that you had at the start of the series. If you're going to do kind of any kind of mystery or use it as a lead and keep it. It's kind of like finally putting together the main couple that you've been keeping apart for the entirety of the series. If you do that for too long without resolving it, and then you resolve it, you're going to kill your series by doing it. Because you relied on the tension between the two of them to keep the series going. So you can have it, but you have to have a way to maintain the series after you put them together. You can't just make it the main draw for the audience. Because if it's the main draw, then them getting together kind of signals the series finale. Because that's basically how pretty much every movie goes. You know, you have these two that don't get along, and by the end of the movie, they're getting along, married, whatever... Mm -hmm. But the movie's over, so that's okay. You're watching the end credits. It's good. They're doing a really good job with the questions and answers and so far, and just the writing overall. <laughs> also, I think we finally found out Louis's real name. 
So really, that's not that any of their names are things that kids their age would want to be stuck with, but his sounds rather feminine. I always figured it was short for Lewiston, but I could have sworn I heard Llewellyn. Especially with his reaction, I think it is Llewellyn because he goes, please don't say my real name out loud. <laughs> Because you'll notice in the very first episode, when the siblings are calling each other by full names, they don't do Louis. The three of them know their boundaries. I love those three. Louis's still my favorite now. Just something about him and his attitude. I think it, I think it was ever since the first trailer where they were like, so which one of you is the evil triplet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just that moment was like, I like him. <laughs> uh, but... Out of all the kids, it, it's still Webby. Webby's awesome. Well, Webby has more practical skills. The boys have more social skills and a little more mentalist-like. Yeah, especially Louie. He is like the most cunning of those three. The others work better with him if they're doing something devious because he is willing, especially the, how to get the siren to stop. You have a wonderful voice. We can make lots of money together. It's a deal. Yes. It's like, look, Zeus just wants to exploit you. I want to exploit you to make us both lots of money. <laughs> also, the awesome thing of, how can I steal from a small child and still call myself a hero? I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for the punchline here because Zeus chose this small child for a reason. And... Oh, she's a siren. There we go. Oh, but it's only controlling the body. His mind is still fully aware. Also, why were the others able to unplug their ears after she controlled just Storkules? Because she's still singing. Also, I know you said Storkules or however it is, but I heard Dorkules. I'm like, that still works. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's not the brightest crown in the box. My friend Donald! Still hugging him with his pecs. I'm like, whoa, down boy. <laughs> oh, wow. This show is so good. Um, the thing is, we don't know if Della is still alive or not because Donald's reaction of, I don't adventure anymore. Somebody always gets hurt. You know, and walking away going, someone always gets hurt. When the conversation's talking about Della. Okay, so we know something bad happened, but how bad is bad? Because I almost, when Celine showed up in the garden, I almost thought that was going to be Della. I'm like, that would be too easy, but hey. Just so many really cool questions. And I liked all the gods except for Zeus, who apparently was the god of hospitality. I don't remember that being part of his repertoire. No, no, Hestia was the goddess of hearth and home. But we are talking about the DuckTales universe, so... Things do vary. Oh, Ithaquack and... Oh, vacation spot of the gods and the populace. But, oh, yeah, things all went south because of Scrooge McDuck. Okay, Scrooge, Zeus is a god? How... I know you have a lot of death curses on you and stuff, but Zeus is a god? Apparently a limited sphere of influence because you were fine until you landed on the island. Also, apparently by the sound of it, they vacationed there before? Even before they messed it up? Yeah, so they were actually vacationing there. Because Scrooge was like, this is why we stopped coming. Which means they had to have come at least one previous time before they ruined everything. And I think what happened is there was a small game between Scrooge and Zeus... Scrooge won, and not just all those things that Scrooge that got pissed off by that Scrooge did. I'm talking about like a small competition between him and Zeus personally. And after Zeus lost, that's when he started making all the lightning storms, and that's why no one comes anymore. So it was probably less Scrooge's fault and more of Zeus throwing a temper tantrum. Well, they even show that on the urns when they turn it around. He called down a lightning storm for several years. That, that kind of ruins people's flows, man. It has nothing to do with Scrooge. It was all your fault. Because you don't have to be the best at everything. Okay, you're a god and you lost to a mortal. Uh, big deal. Eventually the mortal will die 
and you'll still be around, then you're back on top. I love this series. Uh, going back to Della and the Spear, I'm still thinking it has something to do with Magicka Dispel. I'm pretty sure those two events are connected. Either sealing her or something to protect. Because I have a feeling Della knew about all the curses going towards McDuck's way. How could she not? I mean, especially if the three of them were adventuring together. So anything else about this episode you want to go over? Or should we move back to the one I was like, Darkwing Duck! Because there's more in that episode. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more in that episode. But I'm not quite done with Celine. Because interesting difference in the design of the sirens between the 80s one and this one. Because mm. she looks relatively normal. Where the sirens in the 80s version had more of a serpent design while still being feathered. And there were multiples of them. And because it was the 80s, they sang in English. Hmm. Yeah, I did catch you singing in another language. Was it Greek? I don't know. I'm not... No clue. But, you know, the sirens in the 80s sang very clearly in English in exactly what Scrooge McDuck would want to hear. Pennies, nickels, quarters, dimes, come to us while there's still time. Something, something. Oh, ducky ever bold, gaze into our eyes of gold. Wow. High five to Ember. There goes her memory again. Oy vey. I didn't even remember there were sirens in the 80s version. It was a time travel episode. Ah. Time travel by mystical means, not by a uh, time machine. I think they did end up at Ithaquack. They went down an isthmus and there was a statue that they went under with two giant legs. In the modern version, most of the statue was gone, but in the ancient version, the statue was fully intact. And that reminds me, another thing about that episode is there was a uh, chimera on the island. <laughs> there was this tiny little chimera that was all over the place. I wonder what happened to it. I know. When I first saw it, I wasn't thinking chimera. I was like, oh, what a cute little lion crab. Oh, wait, that's a chimera. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was like, what's with, what's with this lion crab? I don't I don't get it. Then Chimera, I get it now. That thing's going to come in in this ep. No, it doesn't. Except for being a statue in, you know, the replica garden. The 125th in a... Wow, how do you just eyeball that? That's Webby. I know, but I, I love Dewey's line there. Baseline, assume I know nothing. That was great right before the intro. Baseline, assume I know nothing. And also, the two of them working together to bring the plane down. Speaking of the plane, I love the way they ended the episode. I found the problem! Yeah, loose screw was the problem, but I don't think it was with the plane. <laughs> uh, no, that's back at headquarters. Screw loose. Alright, now we can move forward. That intro to that episode was amazing! <laughs> and then we pull back with, like, Dewey, I believe. Yeah, blue. Dewey. <laughs> Thank you, Sasami-chan. The way you put that together helped me remember them easily. So, Dewey was kind of funny. He's like, so what? what's with this show? This show's really weird. It sounded like it was older, too. Because he was, like, watching it on VHS or some sort of rerun. Oh, I still love the keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I missed that show so much. And I was, like, so good. I was like, oh, my God. The original voice actors. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ha ha ha. Oh, Launchpad got his license. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait one second there. So you were driving without your license? Pilot license, same thing, right? I do have a pirate license, right? <laughs> now I wonder. Also, the return of Mark Beaks. I was wondering how his technology actually worked. I'm like, last time he was faking it. Oh, he stole it! That makes so much sense. Because I was waiting for it to actually be a person inside the robot. Me too, or remotely controlled. I still like Launchpad. You're not supposed to... What do you mean no crashing? <laughs> <laughs> but crashing is the whole point. Uh, also, the return of another fan favorite. Gizmoduck! And apparently Fenton is no longer an accountant. No, but he's still smart. I wonder if dear mama is still around. I do wonder, because he lived in a trailer park with dear mama, who looked like a chain smoker. Yeah. 
I still remember the episode where she accidentally says Blathering Blatherskite and she ends up in the outfit. I don't remember that one. Yeah, there was an episode where she was watching TV on the screen that was in the original Gizmo Duck outfit. There was a TV monitor at the bottom here and she was watching TV in it. And at one point she like says the Blathering Blatherskite and it jumps onto her. Well, I'm pretty sure that's where Fenton picked up the phrasing in the 80s version. Also interesting that in this version, it is the full phrase that's the keyword. Because in the 80s version, only Blatherskite was the actual keyword. And Fenton never knew that, so he always said the full phrase. Uh, another thing is, I think the phrase is even longer. Because he has to say activation phrase than, say, Blathering Blatherskite. Hmm. So it's even more secure. Which is good. But I love the fact that Beaks is, I gotta have this. Is immediately going, I need this. I need him. So the continuing presence of Mark Beaks, and now in such a way that he's going to be in direct conflict with McDuck Industries. Where before it was just that he was an annoying hipster that was going to get into the billionaires club. Now he's starting to, he stole some of gyro's tech by taking the bot and not fixing the problem i love how he said i just made it look cooler uh oh and also very modern fenton posting the information online to crowdsource a solution i think they even like kind of slight handedly mentioned reddit basically kind of and he's like <laughs> oh wow it makes sense you just posted online like he thought everyone kind of knew about it because it was kind of a thing and he wanted to solve the problem like why does everything go evil on you and it sounds like he's been his assistant for a while yeah because otherwise he wouldn't know all of that not an assistant intern though he seems a little old for an intern mm -hmm. usually interns are younger high school to early college age they could be early college age I, I do like that the headless horse came back the return of the headless man horse I love the tap, 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 tap. Hello, who is it? <laughs> it's me. Just put the phone down to the floor. I was weird. like, you're actually understanding him. That's cool. Over the phone. I'm like, are you really understanding him? Or are you just hearing silence and you're just going, look, please just do this one thing for me. I don't think so. Based on how the conversation went, especially when the horse goes, who is it? He goes, it's me, Fenton Crackshell. But he still could be saying that without understanding i do think he understood i think clacking could go over a phone very easily and if he already understands oh, i don't remember what gyro called him he does have a name yeah i heard it i must say jerry possible y you probably have a better recollection than i do <gasps> of course you have a better recollection. i mean she remembered a song from the 80s show and i'm like blanking on whether or not those things were actually in the show i only am missing like one line because it's something ducky ever bold look into our eyes of gold. I, I'm missing that something. Mm. So I'm missing the first word of the second verse. Same as the first. If you get that song stuck in my head. Sorry. Uh, how about DuckTales? Woo! -hoo. Much better. Or pink fluffy unicorns? Dancing on rainbows. <laughs> oh, and just the periods I was like, are they going to do it? Oh, that's Fenton. That's definitely Fenton. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, no. Bring it up. Bring it up. <laughs> and then he's calling for the suit. Yes. Anything happening? Oh! <laughs> also, could the suit have things in any more embarrassing places? <laughs> uh, though I'm trying to figure out, like, what's the reason for all these? I know it's a beta suit this time. Compared to Gyro making it, you know, the way he did. Because Gyro was kind of, there's a reason his last name was Screwloose. He kind of just like put that suit together from spare parts in the original. That's why it was kind of like all over the place. This is what I'm trying to figure out why it's all over the place other than the fact that it's a beta. I'm thinking mainly that it's a beta and that they put a lot of time into the circuitry. Because the suit's responding to Fenton. But Fenton still has control. So there's a balance there. Yeah, I'm thinking it's very much like the Iron Man suit, except without Jarvis. It has an artificial intelligence, but not a, a one that can override the systems. Basically one that can 
analyze input and provide suggestions. Augmenting the reality for the pilot. Like the Zero system in Gundam Wing. But without the mind trip. Yes. Uh, I don't care what you people say out there. I love the Gundam Wing series. Yes, after watching it again, I want to kill Relina too. I didn't the first time through. But by the second time, also by, by the fan fiction, I figured it out that she was universally hated. I was like, why does no one like her? I remember liking her a lot. Watch it. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> but back to DuckTales and the awesome Gizmo Duck. And the Gizmo Duck, really? No one knows, honest. Bye, Gyro. Bye, Gizmo Duck. <laughs> Uh, from this point forward. Oh, I really like the dynamic that's going on between those two. Fitton and Gyro? Yeah. Because this time, air quotes, everyone knows who Gizmo Duck is. In the 80s version, no one knew at first. But Gyro, the creator, knows. Launchpad knows. And Dewey knows. So those two know. Everyone's gonna know. I don't. No, Scrooge knows yet. I think that we may actually get something where Gizmo Duck has to take off the armor in front of Scrooge after a while. But yeah, we don't get that whole dynamic that happened in the original series where neither Gyro or Scrooge knew who the pilot was. And each thought the other had chosen the pilot, only to later find out that it's Scrooge's accountant, Fenton. But see, there's not the same dynamic now because Gyro has Fenton as his assistant. Not Scrooge has Fenton as his accountant. Mm. So there isn't that same level slash type of relationship between Scrooge and Fenton. Also nice recolor on Fenton. I like his new look overall. Because it's nice to remember that not all ducks have white feathers. Just this series, there's just so much to talk about. You forget about so much. Like how awesome Donald fighting the Hercules-like character was. Because it's Donald Duck fighting someone who's like as strong as a god, and he's winning. Then kind of loses, then uh, Scrooge is like, just like old times. And then Donald's smiling like, yeah, yeah it is. And then the kids stop the siren from singing and everybody's good except Zeus. I just don't think there's so much packed into all these episodes. You just want to keep talking and watching and rewatching and going, wait a minute, frame back, frame forward, frame back. Ah! -ha! I haven't done anything like that myself, but I'm pretty sure there's lots of people out there who are, like, watching this show frame by frame after they've watched it through once. Also, that's a tough phone Webby has. Or one heck of a case. I want her a case if it's a case. Definitely. I mean, we have nice cases for our phones with wrist straps and everything. Lifesavers. Why don't more cases without the portfolio look have wrist straps? I don't want to have my phone case be my wallet, but apparently 90% of the phone cases that have a wrist strap have it because they're doing the whole wristlet wallet purse thing. I don't want to put my credit cards next to my cell phone. Especially since they're usually on the screen side. I know it's plastic against a glass screen, but... You know, the screen side, the part that you're trying to protect, you know, the part that always gets shattered when you drop your phone. The reason we have wrist straps... Anything else you want to go over from these two awesome episodes? Just the realness of Dewey's indecision of what if it was a bad thing and being afraid to find out. Mm, what if my mom was a bad person? Yeah, that would be kind of hard to find out. Yeah, I mean, it would hurt, but it doesn't mean you're a bad person. And I love how Webby was like, mm, I get that. All right, we don't have to do this. And then as soon as she stops pushing, as soon as Webby says, okay, I understand, that gives him the strength to go forward. It also gives him a second thought. It allows him to get past his block and go, oh, wow, okay. Now that I'm not fighting her, yeah, I, I do need to know this. I want to continue searching. Just the action sequence, going back to Gyro and Gizmo Duck and the, the just, wow. That was a well-handled action sequence. This show knows how to animate those. The beats were perfect and dead on, especially the driving over the bridge at the end with the big boulder. And the whole, the only way to live is to crash. Too dangerous, too dangerous. Except it wasn't because if they stopped, the bridge would have been taken out by the rocks. So the only way to live was to get past the robo-driven vehicle. 
And the only way to get that vehicle to move was to crash it off the road. I also, I don't think we've seen the last of that particular robot. No, no, I don't think we have because it's already a second appearance. And it's in the intro. I wonder, because the more I see of Gyro, the more I think he's going to become a villain. And the more I think that Fenton's going to take over his position, now that I know about Fenton and his interactions, and he's going to like reprogram, have to reprogram the Gizmo Duck outfit in case there's any back doors in it that Gyro put in there. And he's going to have to fight that giant robot we see in the intro. Because Fenton, all of his ideas are about helping people and making the world a better place. Gyro's all about science for the sake of science. Man, I've said it a billion times, but I'm going to say it again. This series rocks! Once again, anything else you'd like to go over? I think we better call it before we get longer than the actual episodes. Uh, we're very good at that. So your final thoughts on these two episodes? Really enjoyed them. Very different from each other because we have one, you know, helping to fill in the past and furthering the progress in the mysteries. And then we have one that's more kind of day to day, you know, the everyday struggles because you have Gyro with his inventions, competition from Mark Beeks. All I have to say is two words, Darkwing Duck. Let's get dangerous. <laughs> Better watch out, you bad boys. <laughs> oh. If there's trouble, just call DW. Darkwing Duck. <laughs> and this has been our thoughts on Disney's reboot of DuckTales. Episodes 10 and 11. Spear of Selene and... Beware of the buddy system. Hey, wow, you made it to the outro again. Wow, welcome. So, yeah, not much has changed here since last time. We have this video, which you can like if you enjoyed it. There's a subscribe button if you aren't already. There's a place for comments. Yes, yes, we do read all of them. We answer most of them, but we read all of them. Also links, um, so more of Lux's art, commissions if you want some of your own custom art, Patreon if you want to do a monthly thing. For a dollar you get a sketch that you get to provide input on. That's like the cheapest commission ever. Also coffee, uh, not monthly, uh, but it works in increments of three, which is still cheaper than most Starbucks beverages. I say most because my custom build is less than three dollars, but... That's beside the point. Hacking the system. If we ever get my Tumblr section set up, that will be on there. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogue, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.